Today I'm going to be talking about the character of Moloch, first introduced in Watchmen and further explored in Before Watchmen, Moloch, a miniseries comprised of two comic issues. The first being an exploration of Moloch's origin story, a familiar format for the superhero genre. The second issue focusing on Moloch's servitude to Ozymandias for the purpose of his redemption. One thing I will say is that the two issue run felt incomplete. It felt like a beginning and an end without the core, the centre of the story. However, I do understand that Moloch isn't Dr. Manhattan and popularity dictates where the time is spent. With that said, in my mind, if it could have been a four issue series, the two additional issues could have been focused more deeply on his criminal career and generally beefed out the themes more. With the two issues we have being sharpened up and made up into a first and last issue. That way I think we could have a fully fledged story with a very deep insight to the character of Moloch. We begin the story with Moloch in jail, confessing he wishes to be a better person, and so begins telling a story on how he ended up where he was in jail. On the day of Moloch, aka Edgar William Jacobi's birth, which is an unusual affair due to Jacobi's birth defect, Let's focus first on these panels and pages. From the get-go there is a nice small detail in the change of background colour. This is not just a stylistic choice, but a visual cue to tell the reader we are seeing the subjective dark side. You'll notice that the story is very visual and could potentially be told without words, because it is a relatable story for anyone. The story of an outsider. One way to look at Jacoby's defect is to consider potentially that he doesn't literally look like a goblin, although that may be the case, it can be looked at simply that the fact is he was born ugly, and as a result he became an outsider and was bullied. Could very well be an artistic choice, a decision by the creator to portray Jacoby in the way he views himself, the way that many neglected children may view themselves as ugly or unwanted. You'll find that Jacoby's appearance throughout is usually guised in a shadow, he is blacked out from the world, a shadow in its presence, forgotten and unseen, despite drawing the attention of many. By segregating him in this shadowed state, it separates him visually on the page. Maybe also it could further be suggested that his singular colour tone represents the perception people have of him. They simply see the surface level appearance and judge based off this, in turn shadowing him from their world. Basically the comic's trying to show you he's an outsider. Another thing you tend to see in the panels is the lowered positioning of Jacoby. Often he'll be in the background also. When his face does come into view we get to see the world from Jacoby's eyes. It's a bleak one. Specifically the panel where he is getting beaten. We see in Jacoby's world everyone else is shadowed out and unclear. He doesn't get to be a part of their lives or see their faces. He is only looked down upon and beaten on. It's almost unimportant who it is that's beating him but more so the fact that it's happening. Maybe the facelessness is there to represent just that. The bullying leads to Moloch becoming a magician, something he notes as a profession where he doesn't feel judged for his appearance but instead the focus lies with the value which he provides with his talent. However, after Moloch is emotionally toyed with by Marie, he kills her boyfriend. He then proceeds to flee his hometown, where he becomes a full-time criminal as his magic shows begin to get less sales and the crime is dragging in larger profits. That leads us to this particular panel, which I think is a good visual representation for portraying not only Moloch's slip into borderline insanity, but also his slow sink into crime. We are presented with a series of three panels. Something noteworthy is the now shadowed faces of those around him. This shows he is at home, he is within the crowd of the other misfits and outsiders. They are all shadows here, and together in a way they become less of outsiders due to this togetherness their shared trauma or rejection from society. The slow crumble of Moloch is presented to us through the colouring, which seems to filter the panels, a bit like a lens, and it shows him to us in a disturbed light. Each time Moloch says he hurts it, we get a darker and more foreboding colour. In this case we have a blue slide into a red. Blue usually associated with calm, yellow associated as maybe frustration or mild anger. And then red, which is full-blown anger or fury. Moloch's monstrosity is further emphasised here through his attire. He almost looks like a vampire, Dracula or something. Paired with his increased speed of speech through the caption, the middle image is especially daunting, with the guns held by the men beside them directed to us, society, the society he is repelling. We as the reader are being personally shot at in a sense. I think the point of this page, with its different colouring for each panel, is to show us Moloch as someone who has become uglier as a result of society. The switch in colour shows his own mood and reaction as he is objected to othering. With this said, although Moloch is being tortured by society, he is also evidently happy he has ended up where he has. He has a disturbed and unforgiving look throughout, 
as if angry with himself as much as he is in the society he wishes to tear down. He's unshaken, whatever the mood he's in. Whatever the colour, he simply wants revenge. He wants to attack someone he knows full well is responsible. In a way, I think, if he could, Moloch would want to hurt his maker. But society is the next best thing that made him the way he was, seeing as gods are out of reach. This brings us to the end of Moloch's criminal career, something that happens as a result of the appearance of Dr. Manhattan. Notice in this panel that all of the characters' faces, including Moloch, are shown as well as this rippers beside them, perhaps to represent that he has become fully acquainted with his role as a criminal and an outsider. So now the faces around him come into view. Notice here also how we have a similar colour drop as we descend the panels, red to yellow to the blue that lights Moloch's face up. We have this braided theme, as well as a similar zoom in on Moloch, whereas before he was confident and looked dangerous, he is clearly fearful here. Furthermore, the shrinking of the panels is now used here to show the collapsing of Moloch's power. The final image seems almost biblical to me, with Moloch striking his hand into the air in a torn expression, making him look more monstrous than ever in the presence of a god. We have another use of positioning of characters to show power also. Manhattan stands tall, twice their size, and Moloch with his men topple beneath them as if the ground is shaking. Moloch serves time in prison and is soon released, falling into the servitude of Ozymandias. Something I like about this page is the reflection of both the background and the foregrounded panel. Notice Moloch's face is visible in the top and the prison guards is blacked out, potentially hinting to us that Moloch is in fact leaving the one place where he might have actually fit in with the other shadows, the other outsiders, the other inmates. Whereas the bottom panel shows us a view of Ozymandias, where he looks like the others. We can see his face and all, another person that will torment Moloch, which he does, more so than anyone else. Finally, I think it's key here that the artist has opted to show Moloch hunched over in his old age. From the back, he looks almost ape-like, chimp-like, less human in the presence of Ozzy. He is dehumanized in this way shown as lesser in intelligence and stature. The words God are stated in a caption at the centre of the page, painting Ozzy as this god who is saving him. Although like most gods in the Watchmen universe, Ozzy is false and flawed. In Ozymandias' servitude, Moloch does a lot of things, but the most intriguing one is the papers Moloch is given to sort through. Ozzy crafts these papers to make Moloch feel as if he's accomplishing something important which in turn harbours trust towards Ozzy. Once again, he is very much dehumanised here, whittled down and once again almost chimp-like in stature and intelligence. He goes through these tests as real-world tests occur, with scientists seeing if chimps could see the broken pattern. Ozzy is simply doing the same. I like these panels especially because in this quiet office, Moloch feels at peace in a way. The things around him are coloured black and brown, they cast long and ugly shadows which feel at home beside him. The seemingly endless passing of time shown through the clocks and four panels beside them. We have to utilise closure here to experience the time the way in which he would. It's relatable, however, as he struggles with this problem. Ozzy makes the tests increasingly harder. I thought I would include this page simply for this last panel. The heightened position of Ozzy showing his power, yet the tilted stance of his high-rise window shows his corruption and imperfection as the perceived godlike figure. The ending to this comic, in my opinion, felt rushed and also somewhat forcibly trying to place itself within Watchmen, especially with the ending where Moloch is shot by Ozzy and we see Rorschach enter the room. However, if you're yet to read it, as well as Watchmen and the other before Watchmen prequels, I would recommend it greatly. The storytelling is truly amazing, both visually and in writing. I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. I've tried to be as descriptive as I can. If you have, and if you found it interesting, drop a like, and more importantly, a comment because that's really why I make videos like these. I hope I can make people think and help to start discussions. Thank you for watching.